I'm Tony Howell. I work for a small company called General Motors. I've been working in enterprise asset management since about 1996. And we've uh, went through a time period where we changed the corporation. Not enough. We went through a little period of downtime, as everyone knows. And uh, we've come back out of it. And uh, now we're doing enterprise asset management again. For those of you, how many have been in uh, a vehicle assembly plant? Okay, that's pretty good. How many have been in a stamping plant? Okay. How many have been in an engine assembly or transmission assembly? Good. How many have been in an office building? Okay, all of us. Okay. I'm just going to, for those of you who have not been in any of these uh, assembly plants, I just have a little video to very quickly take you through and see what do we do, starting with the coils that go into our stamping plant and end up with the vehicles at the end of the line where we actually stick a key in and it starts. Pretty much every single time, it amazes me. I used to work for a small uh, company called Hughes Aircraft where we put a lot of uh, energy and stuff into satellites. And so we did a lot of systems engineering. GM bought Hughes to buy that systems engineering. That's how I got involved in GM. Um, the satellite is much more sophisticated. The problem that we have in the assembly plant is not that the vehicle is that sophisticated, but the assembly process is to make it repeatable and sustainable. You can see there's a paint system. We've got robots. We've got robots everywhere. So we use robots in the stamping, in the engines, in transmissions. Uh, as you can see, they paint, they weld. Uh, they even help us put to, on your windshield uh, onto your car. So these are our strategic assets. We've got uh, millions of them across the world. Uh, you'll find that we've got approximately 140 current sites that uh, we are using to build things, from engines and transmissions to parts, rods, crankshafts, all the way up to the v big vehicles that uh, we build. We've got a great workforce. Uh, they do a lot of stuff for us. One thing we have is assets. And how do we manage those? And what are we doing to help change uh, those assets as we go forward in place? So there, you just went through a uh, stamping plant and an engine plant and a vehicle assembly plant. Ah, you're sort of in a conference. Okay. Yeah, that, some of the office buildings are very interesting. Uh, I can tell you lots of stories. Like I said, I've been in the business for quite a while. So when you take a look and say, how much do we spend on assets on an annual basis? We spend um, capital dollars of approximately $7 billion. That's to both buy assets to build new things and to refurbish and replace assets that are in a current production line that need to get replaced. If you take a look at our paint shops, one of the things which we found uh, with our earlier asset model is when I first got in the business back in uh, 2000, a paint shop's life was 25 years. That was the known knowledge. After we implemented the uh, first process and we were able to do an analysis, in reality, it's 35 years. So we're able to take and say, instead of replacing these every 25 years, replace them every 35 years because we're able to take and do some models and say, okay, here's where these assets fall, and the replacement of it goes so somewhat like this. So right here at about 35 years, 80% of the shop needs replacing all at once within two years. Okay, replace it. A paint shop, by the way, a brand new truck one is over $500 million. So not something you want to do on a spur of the moment. We also spend over a billion dollars a year on operations expense to maintain them. And a lot of that is done on the uh, time-based. Uh, we do use a computerized um, maintenance management system. Currently, it's Maximo. And IBM is uh, helping us with that. Uh, we are now going to the latest Maximo. Our previous version of Maximo, we had uh, each plant had their own Maximo, they had their own server, they had their own implementation, their own standards. They were not standard data standards across the entire corporation. That's a problem. Uh, we're now going to the latest 7.6 version, 
where we're putting everybody into the same server, into the same database, into the same schema, and everybody's going to go to the same standard of um, asset taxonomy, location hierarchy. By the way, I own those. So I have the fun of the cultural change that that implies to do that. So that's my role is I own all the process and policies for maintaining all of these assets across General Motors. Lots of fun. Asset management. You can see here we've got this, our full uh, thing there. We start, uh, you'll notice three different things there. There's a fixed asset lifespan, which begins when you start designing it. And you've got a asset sustainment lifespan, which starts when you start acquiring it. And then you've got the fixed asset life management life cycle. When you take a look at building a brand new plant, a brand new asset uh, capacity for building a new product, that's a three-year process. And we start building that right up front. We have to take into account, do I have any asset reuse? So that's part of the asset disposal all the way to at the end. It doesn't end when I get rid of the asset. I have legal responsibilities to maintain environmental records virtually forever. So the asset life cycle goes on forever. So what do we need to do? We've got to link all of the aspects of that life cycle. I've got to have it so that when the ME manufacturing engineer is starting to design this, all the way down to I got rid of that asset, that I've got a nice smooth data flow and data management there. I need standardized processes, I need standardized data. So the naming, the identification, uh, location. Uh, would you believe you're not the only one who loses assets? <clears throat> um, as I'm going in, I'm putting a brand new uh, body shop and stuff in uh, our new truck plants. Uh, by the way, the T1 looks really nice. Um, we are uh, putting RFID tags on every single asset. Because every five years, we have to do a physical inventory. One of the nice things, uh, we're actually tying the inventory process now to Maximal. So that if I show that I PM'd it in the last six months, I don't have to go look at it. I know it's there. So now I only have to go look at those ones that I don't have. And I've got an RFID uh, process. I can take a skillet down and find it and choke point. So lots of things going on. Asset sustainment and asset maintenance. That's a big one. When you take a look at maintenance, and reinvestment. We in General Motors have looked at it like this. So this person over here in the manufacturing world worries about the maintenance. These people over here in ME worry about replacing them as they wear out. In reality, both things are doing uh, the same. They're trying to keep the capacity of the plant going. So we need to link all of that. Part of this then is knowing what I've got and where it is. That is an issue. So in, then, once I know that, oops, what is its condition? Okay, how do I know what the condition is? Now we're getting into asset health, which we haven't done well in General Motors. Once I know its condition though, what do I do about it? Do I maintain it and PM it? So I can just keep doing that. That needs more than just information on the meters and stuff. I also have to know what's the future plan for this asset. Is it going to be that in three years it's going to leave the company because it, I'm no longer going to need it, it's obsolete, et cetera? Or is it one that I'm going to use on the next product program and I want to keep it in tip-top condition? Do I need to reinvest on it? If I'm going to reinvest, am I going to replace it with a brand new asset or am I going to go in and do a refurbishment? And those are capital events uh, in many cases. Those then will go back and change either the inventory or the condition. So that's what I've got to do for basic asset sustainment. Key information I need. Again, I need the inventory, existence, and location. Condition, I need a health score. I need to know how long is it going to continue to operate. Um, as I started working with uh, IBM on their new asset health insight uh, module for Maxima, I really thought it was funny when they said, okay, for when it's going to uh, fail, the end of life, and they had it down to the second. And I went, if you've got a way of determining to the second when an asset's going to fail in five years, I want you to tell me the new uh, lottery numbers. <laughs> okay. 
So, but I need to know an idea of when's it going to fail. So health scores today, I'll show you in a moment what we do. Then I need the total cost of ownership. Those are three bits of information I need to have. Location and inventory, condition and total cost. How much did it cost me to acquire and put it into operation? How much does it cost me to maintain it? If I'm spending 70% annually to maintain this asset of its replacement cost, I need to replace it or do something else to it. I need to know when am I going to need to spend the capital um, to replace it or refurbish it. So I need to do my future planning. Today, I've got three non-integrated systems that are utilized for this. I've got a financial system that uh, is SAP. I've got Maximal for the maintenance side, and then I've got a homegrown uh, system called Asset Condition and Planning that does the uh, basic uh, planning for the future. Today, all my condition is, how many years of useful life does an engineer think this asset has? So we have them annually go out and look at the assets that look like they're getting near the end of life and tell us. The costs today are not correlated. If I wanted to tell you how much maintenance did I spend on that asset, I can't do it. How much have I spent on refurbishment of this? How many times has it been refurbished? I can't tell you. That's a problem. So we're working with uh, Maximal to give us that new thing when Maximal is going to be our gold source for M&E. So it's going to have our inventory. It's going to have the location. It's going to have in it the RFID numbers and all the other information for it. The health score is now going to be based on formulas, models. We're going to be collecting data, so we're going to be tying into PLCs. In the past, when I asked, you notice it was remaining use for life in years. And when I first did this with the engineers, the robotic engineers say, we do things in cycles. The stamping engineers say, we do it in strokes. And it's like, well, that's all for different folks, but what we need is a common thing I can use across everything. I can get to years. If you got a robot, I can tell you that for this particular operation, how many cycles are you going to do per product? Okay, you're going to do this many product per year? Do the math. I can tell you then how many years you've got. So it was something that was useful, but we need more. We need to bring in obsolescence. Would you believe I just replaced uh, last year the last PLC2 in the corporation? Although one of my goals is to replace our current uh, uh, relay logic for a paint shop. It's really fun when I went to that uh, plant and I visited most of our plants and I found relay logic. So you're listening to all the clicks and clacks. Oh, okay. I need more information. We want to be able to tie this into the PLCs and down into the equipment so I can tell you that this particular clamp is starting to close slower. You may need to go fix it. I want to know that that robot, as it moves, it's taking longer and longer, go maintain it. We want to tie that into the maximum work orders like uh, Dan was mentioning. So we want to tie all this world together. Life cycle costs. I want to be able to say to purchasing, you had a choice when you bought these two limit switches and you went with the one that was a buck cheaper, it doesn't last as long or uh, it cost me twice as much to maintain it. I don't have that data today. I want to have true life cycle costing and bring that in. And so that's what we're going to do. Then I can impact my reinvestment and bring everything together. So Maximal, it's what we're currently using. So all of you that use Maximal, you know you've got all of this for it, and Mahi brings in the additional asset information around the health and costs, the meters. Uh, you can read all of those things. So as I'm doing that, the next thing that we're doing in Mahi, the next uh, version that comes out, is bringing in planning. So I can also tie into this thing saying, here's when I'm going to do a treatment. So it looks sort of like this. So I can take a look here. And uh, say I've got an asset, and I can see when it's going to end. So you can see out here, and we'll be able to put in a treatment plan that says, when am I going to look at that? I'll be able to roll that up across a plant. I can roll that up across an asset type. I can roll that up uh, by year. So we'll be able to encapsulate all of this, and I'll have all of those informations that I need. 
the inventory, the condition, and what am I going to do about it in the future so I can start planning and letting the organization know how much money do I really need to spend, and here is why with the maintenance data. Very, very powerful going into the future. There's a beautiful new car that we've got. I uh, just saw it at the uh, um, Detroit Auto Show, the new Corvette. Thank you.